Guillermo del Toro's Cabinet of Curiosities, Episode 1, The Tentacle Demon Guillermo del Toro holds a legacy that is tough to surpass in the horror genre, and he proves his worth once again with an anthology series that dives into the darkest corners of the supernatural world. From spooky creature features to Lovecraft and horror, this Netflix series is just in time for Halloween and we simply just cannot keep calm. In this nicely compiled horror anthology, Guillermo del Toro guides the proceedings with 8 individual episodes directed by 8 different directors. In this video, we dive into the very first episode titled Lot 36, and we will be looking to explore the story in detail and also bring details about the terrifying tentacle demon. There will be a few spoilers ahead, so you have been warned. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. For your lot 36. Lot 36, Beware of the Unknown. You simply cannot miss the beginning of the episode, where Guillermo del Toro walks in and spares a few words for the episode like a gracious host. A spine-chilling intro theme later, we are introduced to a strange old man who is watching television as George H.W. Bush gives a speech on the Iraq invasion. It also gives you an idea that the story is premised in the 90s. The old man gets up from his couch and heads to the kitchen table to chop some meat from what looks like a rabbit or a giant rodent. Just as he is almost done with chopping the meat, he has a fatal heart attack and drops dead on the floor. The scene then cuts to our protagonist, Nick Appleton, who is a bitter and grumpy middle-aged war veteran. It is established pretty quickly that the man has a lot of bottled up hate for the immigrants, and it seems like a lot of his irritable nature comes from the way life has treated him so far. This is not one of the main characters that the viewers will be rooting for, even though the story also portrays his helplessness. Nick is burdened with a huge debt, and he believes that his only opportunity to get out of his miseries is to buy old, unused storage units at an auction. So far, Lady Luck hasn't smiled on him, and he mostly received worthless items in these units that are valued only for their memories. However, Nick continues to hope to turn it around and we see him take part in an auction conducted by Eddie, the man in charge of the storage units there. He buys Lot 36 for $400, which is by no means a steal deal back in the 90s. It is clear that Nick depends heavily on finding something valuable in the storage unit because the loan sharks are losing their patience with him. As he completes the formalities with Eddie, the latter shows him a strange footage where a man can be seen walking into Lot 36 every single day for years. His mannerisms were not exactly normal, and he hopped his way in and out of the storage facility. He also carried a bag inside which seemed to be empty when he came out. Nick doesn't seem to care too much about the peculiar event, and he is simply keen to find something valuable inside that would help him pay off his debts. Just as Nick completes the payment process and walks out of Eddie's office, a woman named Amelia walks in. It is revealed that Amelia was the last owner of the storage unit and a miscommunication led her to be evicted. Her storage unit, Lot 36, was auctioned off because Eddie never got the information that she changed her address and phone number, and Amelia never received her eviction notice. He still suggests Amelia to go and request Nick for access to some of the worthless personal items, but a grumpy Nick dismisses the request rudely. He strongly believes that now that he is the owner, she has no right to check on her belongings inside, and he simply doesn't care about the emotional value that certain items there might have for her. He walks into the storage unit for the first time and he is not too disappointed because there seem to be some items of antique value. However, there is something off-putting about the place, an unexplained darkness in the ambience, and some creepy photos of Nazi soldiers and their flags only make things worse. Nick is far too hardened to be bothered by such stuff and he collects a few chairs, a candelabra, and a tabletop from the premises assuming that these could be of significant value. But just as he loads these in his truck, Nick, a man, appears out of nowhere and ransacks his car. This is from the loan sharks to teach him a lesson for failing to repay them, and the attacker also leaves an injury on Nick's head. Eddie recommends him to pay a visit to an old lady named Agatha, who is an expert on such items and can give Nick a good price. But when he goes there to try out his luck, she is quick to dismiss the candelabra, although it turns out to be made of gold. Her interests are focused on the tabletop, which she believes to be a seance table 
used to summon ungodly entities from the dark dimensions. She also discovers a secret storage space inside the table that contains three books, all related to occult practices. Agatha calls up an old man named Roland, who is apparently an expert on such matters, and he is quick to arrive. The man is fascinated with the discovery, and he reveals that there should be a fourth book somewhere in the facility because it then completes the collection. Nick is thrilled to learn that the four books together could sell for as high as $300,000, and now he is determined to find the other one. He drives Roland back to the storage facility, and during their drive back, Roland lets him on a secret. He knew the family that owned Lot 36. The man was addicted to gambling and lost a lot of his money because of his practices. Desperation drove him to the point where he started investing himself in occult practices. His sister Dottie went missing, and the mysterious disappearance could have links with all the items found so far and the habits of the man. Did he indeed summon a demon to satiate his never-ending hunger? Even as Nick listens to the creepy story of the family that owned the space, and all he is concerned about is finding the fourth volume of the book that would fetch him loads of money. The two enter Lot 36 in the middle of the night, and Nick is determined to find the book amidst all the crap before they leave the premises. While scanning through the random books and documents, Roland finds out a stack of old newspapers that covers Dottie's mysterious disappearance. As they look through every corner of the facility, they make a strange discovery. They find out that one of the walls is hollow, and they soon figure out a secret door in the unit that is well hidden from the outsiders. The door is now open before them, but Roland warns Nick about the possible dangers inside. He instructs him to make no eye contact if they find a demonic entity inside, and he strongly advises Nick against any form of interaction with such an adverse entity. Unfortunately, Nick still doesn't believe a word of this supernatural jargon, and he carelessly walks into the passage. Roland is more aware of the consequences, and he even lights up the candelabra because it is supposed to protect them from evil forces. They are immediately greeted by an unbearable stench as they walk into the premises. Finally, they arrive at a room that has the strongest stench, and a shocking sight greets them. A lifeless body of a woman seemed to be pinned to the ground, and the designs used to summon demonic entities mark a border around her. Roland gasps in horror, revealing that the woman is surely Dottie, the missing lady. Her face has been badly disfigured, and it is now one giant hole, and Roland believes that the demon is locked inside her body. Her hair is almost fused to the ground, and we see the first sight of some kind of a wiggling creature inside her face. However, the sequence of unexplained events does not seem to alarm Nick. He is blinded by his need for money, and when he spots the fourth book ahead, he ignores Roland's repeated pleadings and walks straight to grab it. He is ignorant enough to step through the circle drawn on the floor, and Roland cries about the terrible consequences that his actions might have. Something in these actions has freed the demon after years of captivity, and now it reveals itself to be a tentacled monster emerging from Dottie's body. Roland is in shock and is quickly grabbed and swallowed by the demonic entity. Now Nick realizes the gravity of the situation and he watches in horror as the book in his hands burns into flames. Previously, Roland had explained that the fourth book burns into flames after the purpose is served and it seems like releasing the demon was the purpose. Nick desperately tries to run away from the demon, but as he tries to get away from the facility, he meets the demon at every turn. It is almost like he is trying to run away from himself and the inevitable. The lights of the facility flicker dimly as we come to the most haunting part of the episode. Nick sees a ray of hope when he reaches one of the exit doors, but the door is locked from the outside. He is briefly relieved to find Amelia outside, and he begs her to let him out. However, all he gets is a cold look in return, as she nonchalantly walks away without helping him. By now, it is simply too late for Nick because the demon has crept up right behind him. Just as the lights go out in the entire facility, we hear his last screams as the tentacle demon ends his miseries. The story ends in somewhat of an open-ended fashion, and we do not get to know what happens to the demon now that it is released. Exploring the tentacle demon, trying to solve a few mysteries. It wouldn't really be a fitting Guillermo del Toro project without a mind-blowing element of horror. 
and the tentacle demon provides just what the doctor ordered. We get to see the demon almost toward the end of the episode, but its appearance certainly makes the climatic moments a nail-biting journey. The first glimpses of the demon reveal it to be some kind of slimy tentacled monster that hides inside the lifeless body of Dottie. It probably keeps her alive in some twisted form, but that is not really clarified in the narrative. When Nick ignores the instructions of Roland and steps into the circle on the floor, the demon is released, and it makes quick work of Roland. The old man barely gets to move as the multiple tentacles latch onto him and consumes him within seconds. The lower body of Dottie is used by the demon to move around, and it soon turns its attention to Nick, indicating that the demonic hunger is still not satisfied. The demonic grunts and screeches are something that nightmares are made out of, and this is to be one of the most terrifying moments in the episode. The demon was probably starving for a long time, and it might seem like a feasible explanation that the old man seen in the earlier footage entering Lot 36 every single day probably brought some food for the ungodly creature. It was all probability the same old man we saw dying from a heart attack in the very first scene, and the animal he was chopping was for the demon to consume. The final moments of the episode simply unleashes the wrath of the released demon as it stalks Nick to his eventual demise. There are indications to suggest that the demonic creature could teleport to various places because Nick would run all the way up to the corridor only to find that the demon was waiting for him there. It is safe to assume that the demon was summoned by the man to fulfill his never-ending desires, and in return, he chose to sacrifice his own sister. He used his knowledge of certain rituals to trap the demon in the storage facility, probably to continue fulfilling his demands, and he kept feeding it regularly. There simply cannot be a more twisted pet than a tentacle demon. There is also some indication to suggest that there is a symbolic and metaphorical importance of the demon in the story. Nick, the annoying protagonist, is by no means a character who invokes sympathy, and the demon is simply drawn to the darkness within him. He lacks empathy and the basic courtesies, and it seems like the demon was also a reflection of his inner demons that eventually consumed him. We would have loved to finally see what happens to the demon or the next person who enters the storage facility, but as is with short stories, they don't spoon feed you everything. <laughs> you see, the fourth volume is the rarest one. The mysterious characters Roland and Amelia. Roland and Amelia are two important characters in the story who do not get enough introduction. A lot is left up to the interpretation of the viewer, and you are free to theorize about these two mysterious characters. We believe that Roland was somehow related to the man who summoned the demon. Given the fact that Roland is German as well, and he is also admitted to be interested in occult practices, it could be a possibility that he was one of the fellow Nazi soldiers. It seems that he was somehow involved with Dottie, probably her lover, and he kept looking for her all these years. His last word before the demon consumed him was uttering the name Dottie in a manner that seems befitting of a long-lost lover, or someone extremely familiar. He lasted for a very brief while, especially if you consider his familiarity with the occult rules and practices and even the candles did precious little to save his life. Amelia, on the other hand, is even more mysterious because she is not even related to the old man. How she gained custody of Lot 36 remains a mystery, and her behavior in the last scene suggests that she was aware of the demonic presence. She kept stalking Nick the entire time, and it is still not clear why she never warned him about the actual dangers of the storage unit. She was probably annoyed by his rude behavior, and it is indeed a cold moment when she calmly walks away, leaving Nick to his fate. She was probably a housekeeper who took care of the old man before he passed away from the heart attack. She found the keys to the storage unit and preserved the dangers inside, but if she wanted to gain something from the trapped demon, or she simply wanted to keep it away from human life, we will never truly know. <laughs> Marvelous verdict. A perfect beginning. You simply couldn't hope for a better start than this, a demonic creature to begin the proceedings. As part of a story that keeps you on the edge of your seats the whole time, it is directed by Guillermo Navarro, a man who has been associated with various projects of Guillermo del Toro before, and the story is written by none other than a horror veteran himself. The overall dark and gloomy tone of the presentation, the perfect pacing of the narrative, and the unique creature effects make this an episode to watch out for. If this episode is any indication, we are in for a thrilling journey across all the other episodes that follow. Do let us know in the comments below you about your thoughts on the episode, and do not hesitate to tell us more about your views and theories on the demon or the unresolved mysteries of the story. And if you like our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. 
Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.